look what we have to deal with like every single morning. Like you walk out the door, you got a dog, and then look at this. Look at the cats. Well, we got expensive dry cat food. Anything that make them like healthy. They want wet because I also, because we were in a frenzy to make sure that they were okay. Right. Gave them some more of like, you know, tuna fish. Right. Wet. And now they're like, no. So they're on strike. If I don't give them the wet on top of the dry, they won't eat the dry. They won't eat, period. Look at this. So they have a whole bowl of dry food. Yeah, no. Let's see what happens when you try to give them a can. You're going to get attacked. <laughs> like, I'm not moving fast enough. They act like they haven't eaten in a year. Yeah. Meanwhile, the dry stuff underneath is way more expensive. But no. And you're, oh, did you accidentally get a, a hard piece in your mouth? Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you can find all our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Good morning. I have no idea what day we're on at this point. I guess, what is today, like the 24th, the 25th? It's the 25th. 25th. So it's day 25 of beef, butter, bacon, egg, and keto chow. I actually wanted to clarify something. So... I got a message from somebody like, I don't understand the whole keto chow aspect. So just a reminder, we're not doing this like as a reset for ourselves. We're doing this as a fast for God. And if you really are looking for tremendous body recomposition to do it properly, beef, butter, bacon, and egg does not normally include keto chow. Right. We included keto chow really because we were going to be doing a lot of traveling or we were supposed to until somebody got sick. Plans changed. And uh, we knew we were going to need something that we can have that we couldn't cook and that kind of stuff. But I really wanted it to be able to just have like... Something in our coffee and also for like making chili. Right. Like using the different soup yeah. pieces. But if you're really looking for a lot of recomposition, the best thing to do is beef butter, bacon, and egg with no keto chow. The best part of waking up is Irish cream in my cup. It's Irish cream, isn't it? It is Irish cream. Yes. With two Oh, is that eggs. why you have shenanigans? Oh, I just grabbed the mug, you know? So... Here's the thing, is I'm so in love with the Harry Potter mugs, not just because they're Harry Potter mugs, because they're huge. And you go into our cabinets, and we have all these different mugs, and hey, for most people, these are big. Yeah. But for us... They look, they look th like this, this is, in this comparison. This. Right. You know? And that's why I like the Harry Potter mugs, the two of them, they actually do the entire pot. Like, two, one pot... Fills up two mugs, and there's no more coffee, and there's nothing to go back to, and I like that. There's something sweet about having something to go back to, though. I do like using all kinds of different mugs, especially funny ones like Love You to the Death Star and Back. Right. Because, um, I don't know, it's just fun. There's something about it. It gives me a giggle in the morning. So, yeah, coffee is the entire pot of coffee, one scoop or one package, which, by the way, if you didn't know, it's the same thing. When we say a scoop, it's a serving. So, a right. scoop is a serving. Or, or one of these individual packages. Uh, and then two eggs for the entire pot. So we each get one egg. And then we're having a espresso as well. Yesterday we didn't vlog because I had a staff like team building activity mm -hmm. adventure had that at church. It was so much fun. Okay, so we went to Top Golf. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend that. I know that I have seen it in different states. Yep. So I don't know how big the chain is. Um, but really it is 
a driving range, but you're way high up. Right. And you are actually trying to sink your ball into these big target areas. It's mm-hmm. like a whole area. So it's, it's pretty forgiving, but I was still finding a way to never get points when it was my turn to hit. Cause there was like six people on my team from, from church. And, uh, I would, I would, I kept trying to hit it. I couldn't do it until I found a new way of golfing. So did you win? I came in second place behind second. well behind somebody that was absolutely killing it and they are they were getting um scores from the way back like 145 feet away so I could only throw and hit the target that was closest that my arm could throw to obviously. Leave it to you. So, but I found a way. I didn't come in last. That's what <laughs> I know. I didn't come in last. I was sad that uh, I couldn't go, but Anthony and I had to cut the church. And we had to do all the hedges, and uh, it started off really good. I'm so thankful that I had him with me because we're still healing and mending my shoulder, and I got about an hour into it. It was probably really good like exercise for my shoulder, but the constant like this. Over the top of a hedge. And... um. It just got to the point where I could hardly lift up the hedge trimmer anymore. It just hurt. Now, it feels a lot better now. So, I think it, I just like was really straining those muscles, which are trying to heal right. from having the shoulder dislocated. But you can't give them time off. So, for the rest of it, I had to actually have Anthony do the top, and then I did all the sides and everything. Wow. But yesterday was so cold. Like, I woke up... I had to put on pajama pants, like thermal pajama pants and a hoodie just to go take the dog out to go to the bathroom in the morning and then also let the chickens out because I've been like closing the gate on them because they've been acting funny where now like they're laying in inside of one of the extra hen houses and and so that chased two of the chickens out of the hen house because they're like, this isn't my sleeping area. This is the, this is the laying area now. Joe Stouffer, chicken wrangler. Oh, I know. So anyway, it was freezing. And I, I did all the hedges in a hoodie. Anthony did the hedges in a hoodie. And Anthony is always like, I can wear shorts when it's 25 degrees outside. I am not somebody who likes to be suspicious. I like to take someone at their word, believe the best, but Weather Channel, I'm not believing the best anymore. I mean, the, the weather report that I get, I won't even say her name starts with an A, because she'll butt in. Yeah. Um, I ask her every day, what's, what's the weather going to be like today? And she gives me an answer, but I'm not taking it hook, line, and sinker anymore. So what I did, and you can see... From the first shot that I make with an actual club, I'm wearing a jacket, but I layered up. And underneath that, I was wearing short sleeve, really light shirt. Because I thought, you're lying to me. I feel like midday, I'm going to be angry that I kept this jacket. Well, today, I got up. I went and took Tabitha out to go to the restroom. And I guess it's not a restroom. Is it a restroom when you're taking your dog outside to go to the bathroom? She takes her sweet time, so I think there is some resting going on in between. You I know, know that. Right? We were like, just it's, go. Her and restroom like, is the entire lawn in the backyard, yeah. right? And uh, so, and and I can't just open the door because we have that temporary fence up so right. the chickens don't go onto the new grass. So you actually have to go all the way out there and move the removable fence, the portable fence. To let her get onto the grass because she's a press and is not <laughs> going to go to the restroom on the dirt. It's no. got to be the grass. She it's needs got to be the grass. grass and a certain height of and, grass. Yeah. So I, it, I was like, how much clothes can I take off right now? It is so hot out there. Right. It's seven o'clock in the morning 
And like, I was sweating when I went outside. Like, how is this possible? It's Florida. January and yesterday it was 40 degrees. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it at all. Okay. So yesterday, somebody had said something on the Keto Chow live stream and I just wanted to mention why we do what we do. This is not like a keto thing. It's, it's a channel thing. Yeah. So when someone asked Chris and... Can you get Joe and Rachel to like lower their intro, like shorten it? Oh. Okay, so I I don't know if they would talk about the countdown on our lives or like our intro intro. The countdown on our lives is only there because it gives us time to make sure everything is up. We sit down and sometimes you don't know things are working because of the way we have our system. Yeah. When I hit the start button, it automates everything. So that gives me one minute to look up and make sure. Oh, snap. The stream has gone through. YouTube has picked up the stream and everything is working. And I know I usually miss something, but like the green screens Imagine are on right. Imagine what we do without the countdown. The sound is working. And we just like that better than if I hit go live and something's not working, then the first minute of the stream is us trying to fiddle around. We have enough of that when something else doesn't work. To look at. And so that's why that countdown is there. Um, so that's why we leave it there. But you know, it's a one minute countdown. As far as the intro on our videos, we have it there because there's somebody new. Yeah. You know, and we want to, I, I know a lot of you guys have been with us for three years and that you can memorize our intro. We should have like a contest with that. We're going to. I yeah. think we're like KetoCon or something like that. We're going to have a, a contest. Like I, Autumn did that a couple yeah, years Autumn ago. Yeah, Autumn did that a couple. Like you would get a certain something yeah. if you could do our entire by intro. By memory, the entire right. intro. So yeah, that's why it's there because some people don't know us. But again, our intro is 20 seconds long. So, you know, you can just... Fast forward. So we apologize if it's a little annoying, but again, we got to think about the new person. Yeah. Just like some of the things we have to repeat. And, you know, I was actually doing a coaching call with somebody yesterday and we were talking about the fact that they're like, sometimes they just want a snack. Yes. And what do we do when we, when we want a snack? And I, and I, I refer back to, I always refer back to Dr. Silas. Because I love... He's right. I think he coined the term. I yeah. think I, he, he needs to put a trademark on this term. And that is snacking is always an emotional event. Yeah. We are never snacking to fulfill hunger. If you are truly snacking to fulfill hunger, then you didn't eat enough in your meal before. If an hour after you ate, you're like, I still, I want a snack, I want to eat something. And it's because you're actually hungry, you didn't eat enough in your meal. But snacking is relatively a new thing. And when I say relatively, like I mean like in our lifetime, right? Yeah. Like our ancestors didn't snack. They didn't have time to snack. That's number one. Can you imagine like Michael Landon's character at Little House on the Prairie being like- Plowing the field. Oh wait, stop. snack time. I gotta go get a snack. Right. Like, right. He's not gonna stop what he's, what he's doing. So snacking is relatively a new thing. I, it was really created by the food industry, right? Because when you, when you look at snacking, what do you want to snack on? You know, pe we get messages from people like, what's a good keto snack? Well, nothing really. And I, do I say I'm never snacking? Yeah, I, I do. But I know that it's an emotional event. I'm not snacking to fulfill hunger. I'm snacking for this. But you don't consider a hard-boiled egg or a strip of bacon. A snack. Or a, even a meat stick. That's not a snack. It feels like it's part of a right? meal. Right. Yeah. So what What do we look at as a snack? What we raised as as a snack? What do we give our kids and school Very carby. As a snack? Something carby. Goldfish crackers, cookies, crackers, candy. Yeah. Well, what is all that? When you go back to the, it's an emotional event, it's not satisfying hunger, Unless you want to follow Snickers' silly advertising Well, I was campaign. just thinking that Snicker really satisfies. No. It satisfies this. Yeah. It doesn't satisfy this. Right, because I could still eat after a Snickers bar. Right. It wasn't like it was like, okay, now I'm full. Now I'm completely topped off for the rest of the day. It was just, it was. It was satisfying the taste buds in here it's, and the thoughts it, it, in it, here. And these companies know that. spend millions of dollars on something called the Bliss Effect to find what do we need to do to this product to get them to the point where it affects them so much here, they can't not have it. So, 
knowing that snacking is an emotional event and we're never snacking to eat, what do we do when we want to snack? Well, what? Snacking takes like five or ten minutes. Right. So you've got to fill that five or ten minutes with something. Otherwise, you're going to feel deprived. You can't just cold turkey strong arm it when you're starting out working out snacking because you're just used to it and mm -hmm. you will fall in that pothole if you don't fill it with something. And it needs to be something you really enjoy. It's right. not like, oh, I want a snack, so let's go punish myself by folding the laundry because that's just going to tick you off. Right. So find something that you really enjoy. Maybe it is, sometimes I like coloring. Sometimes I, I go and read a devotion. Sometimes I'll go for a walk. Just put your sneakers on, walk away, because I need to be the furthest away from this room, this mm -hmm. kitchen. I need to get out of here. The bathtub. So go to the bathtub. Take That's the time to take your bath. Um, yeah, walk around the block because it's only going to be five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If we could hold on for 15 minutes, you won't have the urge to snack because again, it's, it's almost like it's an accusation. Like, do you want, you want a snack, don't you? Right. And if you're like, no, and wait 15 minutes, that urge really does go away. Okay. But here's the thing. What if somebody says, I don't have 10 or 15 minutes to stop everything and go for a walk or get in the bath or play a video game or something like that. Now what? They don't have time to snack, to do this thing that's going to distract them from snacking. But they do because that is your time of eating. So like you, you took 10 minutes to eat or you right. walked into the kitchen and prepared a little snack right. and then sat down and ate it. Right. And honestly, when I would snack a lot of times, I would take... Take a minute, maybe flip on the television set and watch something. Right. Like, the, or, you know, pick up my phone. I'm watching a YouTube video for my snack. Mm -hmm. So, like, there is time. There, There is time. You just need to choose to, to use it for something else. I mean, I think about even at work when I worked in, like, an office setting that had a um, vending machine. Right. Snack. I mean, all garbage, right? right. Like Ho-hos and stuff like that. So, I would stand up walk from my desk, walk all the way to where the break area was, put in my money, get it out my ho-ho, eat my ho-ho. That's all time. Right. If I would have just been like, the same legs that will take me to the break room will take me down to, you know, the elevators in the other direction, go down the elevators, walk around the building once, and then go back up. And right. that, that same amount of time is there. Right. Like, I just need to walk in the different direction. So it, when it's when the snacking feeling comes on, don't walk in the direction of the kitchen. Right. There's nothing good there. Right. Right? Walk in the direction of something else. What'd you get? No more Mr. Nice Guy. So I bought that electronic mouse repellent. I went out into the shed last night to check and I literally watched two of the mice sit in front of that thing with the strobes flashing. They were like, what is this joke of a thing? So no more mystery nice guy. There's at least four mice in our shed and I know where they're getting in. So I'm going to block that off. No more Mr. Nice Guy. No more being humane. We're going to get rid of these things. So we got an outside rat and mouse bait thing where we're going to put this out there. Hopefully it'll trap them outside. I got bait repellent to put inside of, and we got three of these high impact kill bars. And I got glue traps. We are getting rid of these mice. So today we're going to make pork belly and we're going to cook it just like a brisket. It comes out amazing where it pulls apart it's got the same texture of a smoked brisket and we've done this in the past but we usually do it in the smoker we actually have a video where we did it during the last go round with beef butter bacon egg i will leave a link for that right up here and we got the idea from smoking dad barbecue who showed how to do it in a kamado gel i'll leave a link for that video down below now we love it in the smoker but one of the goals with this round of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs is to show you how you can do things in normal household appliances for people who maybe don't have a smoker or don't have an Anova Precision oven or something like that. So we're going to do it in the oven. Now, the only difference you're going to have when it comes to making your pork belly in an oven is you're not going to get that smoke flavor. But I've never done this before. We should get the same texture. So we're going to go ahead and start preparing the pork belly. 
So I have an 11 and a half pound pork belly that I bought at Costco. It was actually on sale. I paid $3.69 a pound for it. Now we're not gonna cook this entire thing like a brisket because that would be a lot of pork belly and I don't wanna be eating pork belly for the next five days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take about a third of this off, cook that as a brisket, and then the rest we're gonna prepare for bacon. So first thing we're gonna do is figure out about where I wanna go. I'm gonna do about a third of it. So we have, that's half. So we're gonna go to about here. We're gonna cook this much as the brisket for dinner. And then this is all gonna turn into bacon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the entire thing in salt. And then I'm gonna actually use organic garlic pepper from Redmond and put a whole bunch of that on here. And you could put any kind of rub you want, but since we're doing beef, butter, bacon, and egg, we're just using the Redmond seasonings right now. I'm gonna go ahead on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pat this down. And I'm also going to take some of it and get on all the edges. So while the pork belly is coming up to room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the bacon. So we're gonna set up the cure. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scale and I'm gonna turn it on. And this is very, very simple. Thanks to Christopher, he's actually the person who kind of turned us on to doing this. I'm gonna leave a link down below for the calculator to figure out how much stuff you need for the cure. We're using three things. We're gonna use curing salt, number one. It's also known as pink salt. Uh, not the same Himalayan pink salt, it's a curing salt. We're gonna use allulose, and then we're gonna use some Redmond's regular salt. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zero out our scale. And for the amount of pork belly I have, you're gonna weigh it in grams. I have about 3,600, 3,700 grams of pork belly. We need nine grams of the pink curing salt. Next, we need the salt. We're gonna put 64 grams of regular salt. Again, we're gonna use the Redmond's. And this is the fine table salt. And according to calculations, we need 36 grams of allulose. Next thing you wanna do is give this a really good mix and make sure everything is all incorporated. Once everything is really well mixed, we're gonna go ahead and cover the entire pork belly and rub this cure into the pork belly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pork belly and we're gonna put it inside of a plastic bag. And there's a couple options. You can get the big like two gallon Ziploc bags or if you have a vacuum sealer, I buy these expandable vacuum sealer bags. So they're the same size, but what happens is, is you can actually open it up and it's gonna expand and fit something really big. So if I can go ahead and get that open, we're gonna go ahead and put the whole thing in here. You can also cut the pork belly in half, but you gotta make sure you get enough rub on everything. So we're gonna go ahead and first thing we're gonna do is actually fold this in half, just to make it easier to get in there. Now we're gonna fold it like this. I'm gonna get it in the bag. So you gotta make sure this these expandable bags are much larger than whatever you're putting in there because you gotta be able to bring it back like this. We're gonna go ahead and seal this up. If you're using a Ziploc bag, get as much air out as possible. Okay, sealed it up off camera because I couldn't hold the camera and seal it anyway. Uh, one thing I wanna mention with these the expandable bags, I always recommend doing a double seal because if you have any creases or anything, uh, when you're trying to fold it back up, you could allow air to get back in there and we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep this as airtight as possible. So I always just run a double seal on it. So I wanted to take a second to mention a little bit of food handling safety. And this applies to any time you're working with food, but especially if you're working with raw meat and especially if you're working with raw chicken and raw pork. The first thing I wanted to mention is I don't ever take my chicken and pork over to the sink and start washing it down. And that's for two reasons. First of all, when you go to cook it, you're gonna kill any of the possible bacteria anyway with the heat. So there's really no reason to. Think about a cast iron pan. We don't ever wash a cast iron pan with a bunch of soap because you'd be undoing everything you're trying to create with that cast iron pan. We simply take like a towel or something and wipe it out and maybe a little bit of salt to get off some of like the stubborn like stuck on food. 
You never want to wash it though, because the next time you go to cook it, the heat is going to kill any bacteria anyway. The other reason I don't wash my chicken and my pork is because when you go to do that and you're starting to run water over that, what you're really doing is now spreading any possible bacteria all over your kitchen. So now not only is it on the meat, but it's on the countertops because of the spray of the water and it's all over your sink. So don't worry about that. Just know that when you go to cook, make sure you cook to the correct temperature and you'll be fine. All the bacteria will get killed off. Okay, pork belly has been resting to come to room temperature. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to start. So we're gonna turn our oven on 300 degrees and let it preheat. The oven is at the temperature. Last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put in a couple of meat probes. Uh, I use the meters. I really like the meters. What you wanna do is make sure you're actually getting into the meat, not the fat, because the fat's gonna have a higher temperature. So I'm gonna use two of them just to make sure I'm getting everything the right temperature. And I'm gonna get it in about halfway. And the reason I'm using two is just in case I get into the fat, you wanna kinda know where you're at. So I'm gonna put one on one end, and then I'm gonna put one on the other. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put this in the oven, fat cap up. Ooh, look at all that steam that just fogged up the window. And we're gonna go to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Now, if you don't have any kind of a meat probe you can put in the oven, I highly suggest getting a good one. I will leave some links for ones down below. You don't have to use the meter. The meters are a little expensive. Uh, I like them because there's no wires, but at least invest in a good wired one where you can run the wire to the outside of you know your oven. The other thing I feel is mandatory in every single kitchen is a really good instant read. So I'll leave a link for a couple of them down below. Where are you guys going? We are gonna go on a bike ride, and no, we are not gonna ride tandem. Um, I'm gonna attempt to ride my bike and have Tabitha alongside. We're gonna be super, super careful. Be careful, please. We're gonna go, we're gonna start out really, really slow, but I think it would be good if I could also get her galloping a little bit and, and running really fast. She's not somebody that like, even with a long lead, will run to her full potential. She wants to be really slow. So I'm hoping to like get her walking a little bit more. She's so excited about going there. She's like, enough. So that reminds me, do you remember about two weeks ago, we were watching one of the dog videos and they were showing dogs that actually pull like carts, right? Where right. you like almost like a horse buggy, but it's made for a dog. Right. I really want to find one of those. <laughs> just... I've been looking on the internet and I only found one company, but it'd be really cool to train her to basically give rides in a cart because She'd she's one it. of the dogs that can do it and she... she's so strong and powerful. And Has anybody kids. ever seen those things? It's It literally looks like a carriage, like a horse and carriage but it's specifically made for dogs. She's so and it's happy. how they actually can train like dog sledding dogs as well. Yes. So I want Tabitha to be successful and be able to run alongside me while I ride my bike. That's, you know, great. I, I've seen a lot of dogs that do it. I know she'll be happy when it happens. She's excited and enthusiastic about it. However, we've never done this before. And I shouldn't like expect that we're going to have amazing results right out of the gate. So I found to make sure I don't injure myself and I don't injure her, we need to practice just having this bike. I wasn't prepared for her to have quite such a scared reaction to the sound of like the bike and this big bike next to her. So I need to vet this bike. We're gonna start really slowly and have patience with this process and we will eventually get there. Right now, I want her to stay in the safe area where I want her to be. So come back to me, Tabitha. And we are using this trainer thing. We never electrocute our dog, okay? It is completely fine to just vibrate her and she gets the message. And we actually never get to vibrate. She doesn't like the, the, the sound of a ring. So when I ring it, then she immediately changes her behavior. We started out with a click training. And so she's used to that type of thing where you're like, you hear a click and you get a treat or you hear a ring and, and you know you've done something not correct. So um, we're trying to train her with this. So when she tries to get ahead of the bike, she's gonna hurt herself and me. So I'm just gonna slowly bring her back 
to being alongside me in you know in a, in a safe distance but we're getting her used to it so i thought it was funny it was like baby steps so let's watch her and what i really want is to never be tugging on her leash i want her to always have it like relaxed next to me and if she tries to tug or pull ahead or get that way then then i'm going to correct her and and she knows i've got to stay you know close to mom so she's doing great now if you look over here there's like a high um priority interesting thing over here and that is these little underground owls these burrowing owls and i need her to stay by me even though she wants to go over there and see them so i'm really proud of her she stayed with me even though that barn owl or that burrowing owl rather is very interesting and also daddy walked over there so we don't want her to leave just because she sees somebody she knows because she if she tore off and like ran that way and i was on my bicycle she, i would get hurt and she would get hurt so i think this really speaks into at least my own keto journey and that is you have to walk before you run and you, you definitely need to take it at the pace that you're comfortable with so it wouldn't have worked for tabitha she would have had too much fear if we just like you know i tapped her to this and we just started pedaling off she needed a minute to kind of get her bearings and now she's doing great it just takes patience and sometimes you know we're patient with our pets but we're not patient with ourselves so the meter just notified us that this is at 165 degrees internal temperature on both of them so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out put it up on the stove top then we're going to take a piece of foil and we're going to fold it over. You basically want to have at least a double layer. So we've got to fold it over like that and make sure it's a little bit bigger than a pork belly. And then we're going to take this pork belly and put it on the foil. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold in the sides and make a boat. And we're going to get this as tight as possible. So basically what we've done is we've made a little boat with the pork belly. Okay, and what we want to do is leave the top just like this because what that's going to do is allow us to crisp this top up a little bit. The fat is still going to render down. Now what you can do is you can actually take this, which is mostly, you know, bacon grease, and you can put it into your container or you could just go dump it because what we're going to do is we're going to put this back in here just to make sure we don't have any spillage in our oven. Now we're going to take this, we're going to put it back in here. And now we're gonna go back into the oven and we're gonna cook it until we have an internal temperature of 205 degrees. We get a lot of emails about the meter asking like, why do I use the meter over some of the other temperature you know, monitoring devices? And it's a few reasons. And first of all, I wanna say we are not sponsored by meter. We don't make any money off of them. We're not affiliates with them. I just think it is the absolute best temperature monitoring device out there. And I love the fact that it's completely wireless. I like not having to deal with wires hanging out of my stove, wires hanging off my smoker. I don't have to deal with figuring out which probes go with, you know, which one of the bases that I have, because I have a lot of different like wired ones. Uh, but what I really like about it is it monitors so many different things. It's not just monitoring, you know, what the internal temperature of the meat is, but it's also monitoring what the ambient air temperature is in wherever you're cooking. So when you put it in there, it knows, okay, the internal temperature is say like 85 degrees, and then it's monitoring the external temperature of like, you know, the oven being 300 degrees. That's really important when you look at the fact that like in an oven, the air temperature is always changing. It's not like super stable. So it's always monitoring that, and then it's able to give you an estimate of how long everything is gonna take to cook. The other thing that is really cool about it is it saves everything in the app. So every cook is saved in the app. And then when you want to make, for example, another pork belly, you can go back and look and see how long did each stage take. So if you go into the app right now, you're going to see that this first stage took about 48 minutes. So now we started another cook and it's now monitoring that because now we're telling it, hey, I want to go to 205 degrees. So it's monitoring, again, the ambient air temperature in there. It's monitoring the internal temperature. And then when it's done, it's got everything recorded so I can go back and figure out how long does it take to cook it. And now the next time I want to know, I know I can go, okay, I'm making a pork belly. It's this big and, you know, it's going to take me three hours or it's going to take me five hours and you can kind of plan ahead. So I wanted to show how this new Nespresso refill system I found works. So basically what you do is you take this piece and you can get it all as a kit. 
You're gonna take off the top funnel, put in your empty Nespresso pod, put it there. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this little funnel piece right there. Then what you do is you actually just add in your espresso into here. And if I was smart, I'd be brewing this like over paper towel or something so that it'd make a mess, but we're just gonna put a little bit in there. And then we're gonna use this to kind of push it down a little bit. Then what we do is we take off the funnel carefully and we take the little tamper and we push it down. Now I added a little bit too much, so we're just gonna take the brush and kind of brush it back into the middle. The key is to get the grounds off of the edge. Now this doesn't take nearly as long as it looks here on the video, it's just that I'm trying to video it. Then what we do is we take a sticker, we center the sticker over it, and then I use the edge of my brush to kind of press down, and then we go around the edge underneath. And we're done. And honestly, this is the best system out of all the ones we tried in that Nespresso video. It's similar to the other ones because we are using the old Nespresso pods, but I like the funnel and the fact that it helps you get everything right inside without getting a whole bunch on the rim. And then also that tamper really makes the coffee come out great. So when you go to brew it, you have a perfect crema on top. And other than the taste of whatever espresso you're using, there is no difference. You really cannot tell which one came out of one of these reused pods and which one came out of one of the actual Nespresso pods that were brand new and cost a dollar to a dollar twenty-five a piece. So the meter app is alerting me that one of the probes is at 205 degrees. The other one's still at about 199. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a probe test. We're checking for a probe test. We're not checking for doneness as far as temperature. So this one still has a little bit of resistance going in at this thicker part of the pork belly. This one's just like butter. You can see that side there. But this one, I really want to let it go just a little bit longer. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check this one more time. Use our probe. Yeah, that's it's still slightly not, you know, like as butter right here in the middle. But I think we're good enough. Now, what we're going to do is I like this to be a little bit crispy. So we're going to go ahead and turn the broiler on for just two or three minutes. So we're going to close this up and that should bring the middle up to the temperature that I really want or the doneness that I want. We're going to put our door just like that. We're going to turn off the main oven. We're going to hit broil and turn it on high just for a couple minutes. Okay, this smells delicious. It should be done. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Oh yes, that is how I like my pork belly to look. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and we're gonna put it on the counter and we're gonna let this rest for about 20 to 30 minutes. So I did wanna say, if you want to make sure while it's resting, it stays hot, just put a little foil cover, just like this, lightly over the top. That'll keep it from cooling down while you're resting the meat. But the resting the meat is very, very important. Are you ready for this? Is that bacon grease or water? It is water. I just got out of the shower. It is what? <laughs> 6.47 and I just took my shower because I've been like running around like a chick on my head cut off. You ready for this pork belly? Yes, sir. Let's see how it came out coming out of the oven. Are you ready? Yep. Oh my goodness. No smoker involved. No smoker involved. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is bring over a bowl and pour all of this precious bacon juice into the bowl. Now, what is this good for? You can actually use it as bacon grease because that's all the fat that's rendered down. And, and it's, it's gonna gorgeous. have the flavor of all of that black pepper and garlic from Redmond. Very, very important. Look at the grain. Here's the grain. We wanna go against the grain so that we can have some like really tender cuts. And let's see. Look at that. Wow. I'm gonna slice off a piece for you. I have been so patient today, have I not? 
This is really like our first meal. I mean, we had an egg in our coffee with keto chow, but that mm. was at seven o'clock. Oh my gosh. It has been a minute since we've made a pork belly. Hmm. It is knee buckling. I feel like everyone needs to at least try this once, especially in the oven. I am eating my eggs first because the pork belly is the treat. And I know I want to end with that as my last meal. Yeah, mm -hmm. the last bit of food. Okay, I want to taste the skin. Because the one issue with doing this in an oven as opposed to the smoker is yeah. it's a little bit more difficult to get that crispy skin. So what I did was for the last couple minutes, I just put it under the broiler to crisp up that skin. It looks gorgeous. Oh. Right? It looks beautiful. It's not really skin, it's the fat cap. Mm -hmm. That came out so good. It looks slightly different because there's no smoke ring. That's right. That's what looks different to me. But it is still fall apart like a brisket. I, mean, I ain't upset. You can't even, let's see you on camera. Can you go ahead and try to break it apart with just a fork? Oop. I just dropped my egg in my lap. Try, can you break it apart with a fork? Well, That's yeah. what I want to know. Look at that. I mean, oh. it wants to stay together, you know, but I mean, like very minimal effort. Like, I mean, this is, these are the crappy knives. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. You yeah. can just use a fork and pull it apart. Yeah. I'm really just using the knife not to cut anything, but just to hold it down. So I have some resistance for mm. the fork. Okay. I wanted to share a couple things before we close out the vlog. So we showed in the video the other day how to adjust your stand mixer. Oh yeah. Right? I still ended up ordering another whisk because mm. I was in the middle of ordering it when I remember that you can actually adjust it, but my whisk was all bent anyway. <laughs> so I went on and I found this from KitchenAid and this whisk is different than the standard one. Let me get the one that's the standard one. So this is the standard one okay. that, come, that you get when you, know, you buy a KitchenAid stand mixer. And this is the one that I bought, which this is a genuine KitchenAid one. More dense. So this is considered a six wire, okay. right? Or how many? Yes, yeah, so one. Yeah, it's a six wire. This is, I believe it, they call it a, their 11 wire. And you can see how that is. What's I'm going to leave a link for this down below. I bought it on Amazon. I didn't know if it was really going to work, but... I made one of the Maria Emmerich Wonder Breads today. Yeah. And I, I add keto chow at the end. I, I love the flavor and the texture that you get by adding the keto chow. That's the only thing extra we're doing. Uh, we're actually going to redo that video because I stopped putting egg on the top because it was sometimes getting a little too eggy. But this one, because there's so many more wires, it brings the egg whites up to that fluffy, like, you know, meringue. Oh. Half the time. What? And it got like twice as big. Okay. So it was, I think it was like 30 bucks, but it literally cut the time in half and it's going to do that anytime you need to whisk And we something. make it a lot. But the other thing I wanted to show you is, I wish, oh, we have a thing. So this is one of the breads that we do in the oven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, we're not adding any allulose, but I wanted to show you same exact recipe. Right. But I made one in the Innova Precision Oven at 50% steam. Look at that. Wow. Oh my gosh. Right? Let me, I'm going to go ahead. It's only us eating anyway, so I'm going to use this knife and cut it in half. Does it look like on the inside? Well, that's what I'm doing. The knife's a little small, but look at that. Huh. Very dense. Much look more dense. Look at that. So you can see the inside of that one. And then I'll show you the inside of that one. Look at all the holes. The holes on this one. Yeah. I mean, this one's got a couple of holes too. Not like that. But you can look and see this, this one is more almost like bread texture. Mm -hmm. And that's because the Innova oven, I'm cooking it in 50% humidity. And because of the way the oven works, I got this nice golden brown all the way around. And again, the there's no allulose. I didn't do anything different other than cook it in that combi oven. So... We're gonna put a couple pieces of that over onto the electric blackstone and toast it up. Mm. Oh, I, can't, I want another bite of this so bad right now. I can't even talk, I wanna eat it. I can't even talk. Like it's just so, every time we eat it, I think why do we not make this more? 
Mm -hmm. Right? And this is, you didn't even use an entire pork belly. This is only a third of the pork belly. Why don't we make it a, pork is just not as good for you as ruminant. I mean, it's just, it's not. This tastes pretty good though. It tastes good, but you're not getting nearly as many nutrients in eating pork as you would get in eating, you know, beef or eating lamb or eating elk or bison or something like but that. pork belly. And again, when it comes to pork, you want to try to get that fat and that this is pork belly. It's the same thing as bacon. You know, bacon is just pork belly that's been cured. And that's what we did with the other two thirds of the pork belly. It's now curing for bacon. You have enough left to be able to eat some tomorrow, but we'll probably have it linked maybe with breakfast. I know what you like to do now with the leftover is cut it into little cubes, stick it in the air fryer and get it really, really crunchy. Really crunchy. But you can do this in an oven. This is I love pork this. belly cooked like a brisket. Can't say smoked like because we didn't smoke it. But you can cook it like a brisket. But you would do the same thing with a brisket. So put your brisket into the oven. You're gonna cook it at, now this is cooked at 300 degrees. A brisket, you're going to cook much lower. Right. At about 225 to 250 degrees. But same thing. Go to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. When it gets there, make a foil boat. Put it back in there until you get to 205 to 210 degrees. A total cooking time on this, according to the meter, because again, you're able to document in the app how long it took. The first part took 50 minutes. Okay. The second part took just under two hours and then 30 minutes to rest it. So three and a half hours. This one takes some patience, but yeah. Lord, it's worth it. But it's nothing like a brisket. So, no. you know, a brisket, you're going to look at 10 to 12 to 20 yeah. hours. It's much faster. This you're going to get done in a few hours and it's delicious. It is so crazy good. So that's going to be the end of today's vlog. Let us know down in the comment section. What are some other things you'd like to see us cook in a pressure cooker, in you know a crock pot, oven. in an oven, or in an air fryer? Things that mostly we would be cooking in either a sous vide or on the grill or some on a smoker. Some specialty things. Let us know, is there anything else that you'd like to see us cook inside because maybe you don't have a smoker or a sous vide or you know a barbecue or something like that? I mean, heck, around a lot of the country right now, you can't even grill because it's super cold outside right. and we don't have that down here. That's one of the reasons we're doing this. So let us know down in the comment section. Now if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we realize pork belly for everyone, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. bye.